Welcome back, you're watching Southern Diaries. Tik Mahindra is looking to fill the white spaces in its business through acquisition of startups. And I spoke to Jagdish Mitra, the head of strategies and also Shirisha, the head of innovations at Tekem to find out what is the road ahead as far as the startup strategy goes of the company. Listen in. The fund came into play primarily because of two reasons, not to act as only as a private equity or a VC uh, fund, but also primarily to act as a strategic investment fund so that we can actually take these startups to what is our biggest asset, the 770 large corporate customers around the world. And Techmahindra prides in having a huge amount of retention amongst these customers, which means we have great relationships which are built over years. Now these relationships are a huge value to us. We do a lot of their critical work in IT. We need to move them towards the digital world and there we need the startups to work with us. So it's a symbiotic relationship. We learn the agility, the new ideas that are there in the startup and startup get to access the 770 plus customers through us. So uh, that's how the fund operates. Sure, but also in terms of white spaces that we're talking about for Tech Mahindra, you know, are you looking to fill those white spaces or you know, are you willing to go beyond that and something inter interesting that may not really be you know something that Tech Mahindra at this point in time needs but in the long term perhaps would serve your purpose would you be open to doing acquisitions there I want to know you know what are the spaces in which that you're looking to pick up startups is it just white spaces for Tech Mahindra or beyond that um, absolutely both I mean because one is what we call as white spaces for Tech Mahindra are the the areas that we are talking about today. So if you heard our uh, MI16 topics, they're all around the areas where we think the next round of uh, technology innovation for solving business problems will come in, whether it is IoT, whether it is robotics, whether it is uh, virtual reality, AI. Um, and these are stuff that we have to constantly do. But there are some that we will put in as future bets. And these future bets could be a combination of technology as well as business models. Now in both these cases, there will be some that will work, some that will not work. It's a little bit of a crystal ball gazing. And therefore for us to decide uh, which ones will work, we'll have to invest in four or five of them, which are there in the future. But however, we, we still remain to be a company which is focused on uh, what shall I call applied research. We are not a company which will open up a research uh, fundamental research setup like Indian Institute of Science. We will work with them or we'll work with a university in Canada or we'll work with universities in the US and UK to do some work around how to take these research outside. But our job is to make sure this technology research which the academy has worked and that's why the environment that you are here today is apt. Here we have probably one of the best campuses. We have a zone in which we allow people to, it's called the neuron zone, where we allow people to innovate. We have our engineering college, Mahindra Ecole here. So we get an academia participation in this. So if you look at it, all elements of research as well as applied research, applying it to a business is all existing there. So we will continue to invest in some of the new future bets, which we think would be the way to go forward. But there's no major empirical formula to it. Typically, we've kind of had two sets of strategies there. One, direct to consumer business models. This direct to consumer business models, we have tried to restrict it to do only in India. Primary being the fact that we can leverage the Mahindra brand. Mm -hmm. And in a consumer business, your awareness of the brand plays a big role. And I think that's why what we did with Payments Bank or what we are doing with Saral or whatever else we are doing, will all have the Mahindra backing to it because that we think is the brand of trust mm -hmm. and that's very important when a consumer buys products in it. The second part of it is really towards B2B which is where we are focused on platform development and investing into platforms and technologies that you saw today towards our larger 700, 750 odd customers that we have. Sure, Shirish, I want to understand from you in terms of, you know, the innovations part of Tech Mahindra, what is really happening? What are you guys working on? 
Well, firstly, I think I'll step back a bit in terms of why innovation, right? So there is a lot to do with customers and the expectation from customers, I think, in today's world, right? So it's no longer about uh, low-cost bodies that you can provide into customers. The expectation is that you go in as an equal player into some of these customers. I mean, they could still be customers who are looking for, you know, just low-cost resources. But I think customers where we have large relationships with, I think the expectation is that we come as an equal into that relationship where we are investing, where we are coming in with ownership to certain solutions. What really is that uh, that you would be probably looking at when you're uh, picking up a startup? Um, specifically, we look at startups A, which are um, which are at a stage where they are focused on the technologies that we have defined. So, um, whether it's in the areas of so I'll go through two rounds. One is what we call as verticals and second is horizontals like our, uh, you know, the uh, technology competencies and the industry competencies or focuses. So the technology competencies are IoT, AI, robotics, analytics and security. These are primarily the focus areas which we look at. Um, second area that we look at technology competencies are platforms. So if you take a process that runs in an industry vertical and say this process today can be disintermediated or changed by bringing in this platform. Therefore, it takes manual parts out and there is a whole lot of service that can be delivered by using the platform. So we're looking at platforms in banking sector, we're looking at retail, we're looking at telecom or communications and manufacturing. So this is broadly our area of definition around which we operate on. We traditionally stay away from investing in from B2C customers primarily because as I said our focus is in India and that to the strategy is that using these B2C businesses we'll build some technology platforms which we can take to other markets. Okay, We'll definitely run this as a separate business but the idea is how do I experience this and take it global. That's the whole strategy behind it. So when we invest we look into these criteria. When we are looking at um, uh, a typical startup, some areas, we, I mean, there are where we expect exceptions, but most of the times we will look at companies which have got at least a few customers in place and have a proven method. Mm -hmm. So we will necessarily not go into Series A type funding and try and do that because as you know, as I said, most of our work is towards taking solutions to customers. So they need to be a little more proven in their model before we start investing in them. That's all we have for you this week. For more news and updates, keep watching Bloomberg TV India.